When we sold our 50-foot Nordhaven a few months ago, one of the items the buyers wanted to keep was my 3D printer. I had learned to design and print on this printer over the years while we lived aboard in Mexico. Not to worry. When we got our new Nordhaven 57, I got a new printer to go with it. Why would anyone have a 3D printer on a boat? Let me explain. Welcome aboard. We are Pat, Alexa, and Gilligan the Fat Boat Cat. We still work and live aboard our 57-foot Nordhaven in Mexico. Follow us as we cruise, explore new cultures, appreciate the wonders, and work on our boat in exotic locations. We are Noetta with no ETA. A few years ago, I attended a boater's workshop in La Cruz, Mexico that was given by a sailor, an engineer by trade, who was using a 3D printer on his boat. I was immediately hooked, I got my first printer, and taught myself how to design and print objects. The best part about having a 3D printer on board has been when we have a unique need for something that either is no longer in production, or something we can't get shipped to us in remote places, or something that has just never been created. Okay, so let me explain how this 3D printer works. You start over here with bowls of plastic. There are different kinds of plastic. Some are better for sun and UV and strength. Um, the one I'm printing with right now is called PLA, and PLA is just a simple indoor, non-super strong. It's good for these kinds of things. Um, and also right now, I'm just printing a keychain um, to go on the boat key. Anyway, so basically what happens is the plastic comes out of here, around the back over there, into this hot end right here, where it heats it up and then sets it down. And then there's a fan in there that cools it. And um, then it goes over and does the next layer. Obviously there's a lot of software involved before it gets to this level, but um, this is just a little buoy key fob that tells us that the fender's on. Um, we keep it, uh, I'll show a picture here, but uh, we keep it on to remind us that there's a fender covering the stack cover up above. So um, this one will take about 45 minutes to print, and but not very much plastic. So of that orange right there, um, it'll just use a few little grams and that was one kilogram of orange and so obviously I could print probably a thousand of these. Um, yeah, almost, probably maybe 800 or so. I don't need that many, just one is good. Um, so some things I print are more useful and others are not, but they're really cool anyway. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so some things I design, uh, like this little keychain I did, and other things, um, again, not as useful like a whale shark, but he's really cute. Uh, other people have designed these and there are free libraries out there where you can just go download them and, um, or other ones that are nicer and you can pay uh, to have them downloaded. There are also people out there that'll create something if you said, I really need a, I don't know, a, your boat um, printed, then um, somebody could probably design it for you. But uh, anyway. So it's some useful things and other things that just are really cool, like this. <laughs> anyway, that's my print for today. So we put this new screen in on our flybridge, but it has a door and the door should close there. This little thing should look, go into something like that. But because that screen is too big, I had to design something. The designing process takes some knowledge of CAD software, lots of careful measurements and often a few prototypes. For this latch, initially the hole was too big, so after I printed it and tested it, I went back and adjusted the size. The next step takes place in a slicer software. This is the software that tells the printer what type of plastic to print, at what speed and quality, and if an item needs supports to hold it up while printing. These did need supports, and it's shown here in green. 
So I designed this. We're gonna screw that on there. And it's just a little different than this one. It's shorter so that it can fit with that big new monitor. So it'll go there. And then this will close. Oh, it will. Yeah, I think that'll work. So we'll need to screw that onto there. So it stays. So what we needed is something to go up here. We've wired for cameras, but we're not putting in the cameras yet. So, but there's just a little hole up there. So, so far I've prototyped something like this on the 3D printer and it'll hold that, you know, cable up in there and then we'll be able to screw that on. What Pat requested though is that this um, rim part of it be a little thicker so we could get some screws through it and make it more solid. Right now it's kind of hollow. And then the idea is we'll hide all that in there and then that'll sit up there. It's a temporary fix until we actually get cameras out here, but 3D printer to the rescue. So today's 3D print um, was an organizational thing. Um, two parts, I need to put it together, but they print in two parts, um, not necessarily because of different colors, but they just won't all fit on the build plate. And it's going to hold the uh, miniature Diet Coke cans, which we always seem to have in the fridge. So it'll take a little bit of glue, a tiny bit of assembly, and hopefully I'll be um, a little more organized in the fridge.
come full circle. And for the past couple of years, I have been the one giving the 3D workshops in Mexico, sharing what we've learned along the way. What would you print for your boat? Let us know in the comments.